Good morning everyone, it's lovely to welcome you to our Sunday morning online service and very soon uh, many of our brothers and sisters will be worshipping together in the church building so it's great to have two services running almost in parallel. Just to encourage you this week, if you haven't yet been to a service in church you're very welcome, uh, you don't have to book, you can just turn up um, and it's good to be able to worship together as the body of Christ and actually see people and then have a chat outside afterwards. Also coming up uh, this week we've got a sad occasion, it's the funeral of Matthew Thornton, the husband of Joanne who is a special needs teacher at Bathford School and from about quarter to two there'll be a drive by of the hearse on the way to the church service at two so if you would like to line the pavements please do come and show your support and also that means that there won't be any private prayer on this coming Wednesday. But as we think about God, we think about, uh, we've been thinking over the last few weeks about uh, how we experience God in our everyday lives and how sometimes the smallest thing has a really big significance. And today we're going to flip that on its head and we're going to talk about glimpses of glory, those moments when we catch a glimpse of Almighty God and what happens as a result. So as usual, we've got many people involved in the service. I'll be leading and preaching. Catherine will be uh, bringing our intercessions and Audrey is uh, hosting the Bible reading. So we're very grateful to everybody. Steve's been editing uh, and doing the music. And then in church, obviously we have a slightly different team with Beth on AV as well. So thank you so much to everybody who's involved. But as we come together, let's just have a moment of quiet as we acknowledge that we are the body of Christ together in the presence of Almighty God. can see I do have a bowl of water with me today and I've also got some items with me and um, I want you to see whether you think that these items that I have with me are either going to float or sink. So I'm going to show you my first item. This is a, a red wooden block. What do you think? Do you think this item is going to float or sink? Take your votes. What do you think? Is it a floating one or is it a sinking item? Okay, let's have a little look and see what happens. And it floats. So if you were one of the people that said, yes, that item's gonna float, then give yourself a point because you have got yourself a point. So the red wooden block, it does indeed float. Now I've got a second item with us um, this morning. Um, it's, a, it's a metal spoon. What do you think? Do you think this is going to sink or is it going to float? What do you think? Is it gonna sink? or float. Okay, let's put it into the bowl of water and see. Well, as you can see, 
it has sunk straight to the bottom. So that item, the metal spoon, has indeed sunk. So if you said that that, that item was going to sink, then give yourself another point. OK, let's try another item. OK, this is some heavy duty foil here. What do you think? Do you think this is going to float or is it going to sink? What do you think? OK, well, let's put it into the water and let's see what's going to happen. And you can see it has floated. So that heavy duty foil has indeed floated. So if you uh, decided that that item was going to float, you were right. So give yourself another point. Now, I've also got a same piece of foil, but I have screwed it up into a ball. So it's still that heavy duty foil, but it's screwed up into a ball. What do you think? Do you think this item is going to float or is it going to sink? Have a little think. So is it going to float or is it going to sink? OK, let's try it and pop it into my bowl of water. And it has floated. Hopefully you can see that. So that heavy duty foil has indeed floated. So um, if you decided that uh, that item was going to float, give yourself another point. So I want to know, are you a floater or a sinker? Don't worry, I'm not going to throw you into a tub of water to find out, but I think that we can find the answer in the Bible. Do you remember the story that we had last week when Jesus fed 5,000 pe people with just five loaves of bread and two fish? Well, after he had finished feeding the 5,000, Jesus told his disciples to get into their boat and go to the other side of the lake while he went up into the mountains to be alone and to pray. And while the disciples were going to the other side of the lake in their boat, the wind came up and the water began to get really quite rough. And the disciples became afraid that their boat would sink and that they would be drowned. Then they looked and they saw Jesus toward them and coming towards them. And he was walking on the water. Now, when Peter saw Jesus, he became excited and he said to him, Lord, if that's really you, Jesus, if that's really you, let me come to let me walk to you on the water. And Jesus answered Peter and said, come on then. Well, Peter climbed over the side of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. Then he began to look around. He felt the strong winds and saw the waves and he became afraid and he started to sink. And he cried out to Jesus, help me, Jesus, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and saved Peter. And he said to him, O oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? So from this story, we can see that as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was walking on the water. But when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. Now, as we go through life, there will be some storms. There's no doubt about it. We will face storms. And we will encounter some pretty rough water. But as long as we keep our eyes upon Jesus and put our trust in him, we will be OK. But when we take our eyes off of Jesus and put our confidence in our own ability, we will surely sink. Now let's pray. Dear Jesus, when the storms of life come against us, help us to keep our eyes on you and to put our trust in you. Amen. So for today's craft, I thought we might have a go at making this. OK, hopefully you can see that. Now, it's um, supposed to be Jesus walking on the water um, towards a boat so the, the disciples that were out on their boat so all you will need is one paper plate you will need um, a, a brown bag if you have something like this or a brown um, 
a bag of some description that'd be fine you'll need some blue and white tissue paper here or any sort of paper would be fine as long as it's blue and white um, and then if you've got any yellow paper or or different color paper that would be great as well you also need a pair of scissors a peg so one of these pegs here, uh, a drinking straw, um, a little bit of Play-Doh, I'll show you what you need that for, uh, a hole punch and some glue. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we're going to make our boat. So you just need to take your brown bag that you have got and we're going to cut it right across the middle. So you've just got this. And for your boat okay so that's your boat and with a whole lot of glue you're going to put a whole load of glue onto your paper plate lots and lots of glue because you're going to be sticking your tissue paper onto the glue onto the paper plate as well so lots and lots and lots and lots of glue i think you'll probably enjoy doing that that's always a good part of the craft so i've covered my um uh paper plate in glue and I'm just going to stick my brown paper bag on top of it so we've now got the resemblance of our boat and then if you can take some time cutting your tissue paper just into little tiny squares something like that and you're going to stick it onto the side of your boat like this so that that becomes the water okay and if you can try and make your tissue paper look as rough as possible so we get a real sense that um that the water is really choppy um as we remember that story that the disciples were in the boat and a big storm whipped up and they were frightened so we're going to put that on both sides as well okay so try and make your uh, tissue paper look as choppy as possible because that's going to remind us of the water um, that the disciples found themselves in and where they saw Jesus walking on the water towards them. Okay, so I'm just sticking those on as best as I can. So there we go. So we've got our choppy water going on there. You then need to get your yellow construction paper or any sort of paper and you're going to cut a triangle out. So just going from corner to corner would be sufficient. So you've got that. And then with your hole punch, you're going to make two holes in it um because this is so there's one at the top and you're going to do it at the bottom and if you can line them up as best as you can you're then going to thread your straw up through those two holes like that and that has become your sail to your boat okay now with a little bit of play-doh that you have if you take a little bit of it just a tiny bit and you're going to mold it in your hands to make a little bit of a a ball if you like with it and you're going to put that at the front of your boat inside your boat okay so there it is inside my boat and you're going to stick your straw with your sail on top of it like that okay so that's up nice um perfect okay you're then going to get your peg and um, as long as you check with your mum and your dad that it's okay for you to draw on a peg. So if you um, draw Jesus' face on the peg, so I'm just going to put um, two eyes, a nose, um, I'm actually going to do a little smiley face on mine. And if you could put some clothes on Jesus as well. So I'm just going to uh, colour straight down the front of the peg like that. And then the idea is once you've done that, you should be able to grab a little bit of the tissue paper that you've stuck onto your paper plate and that should hold Jesus um, on the paper plate. I'm going to see if I can get him to sort of stand up. Yeah, he is. There we go. So there's Jesus stood up on um, the tissue paper there, reminding us of that story of when Jesus walked on water ooh, to his disciples who were out on the boat it's a bit tricky because i haven't got so much tissue paper on the bottom so jesus isn't standing up so well but i reckon you'll be able to get 
your Jesus to stand up really well. I definitely need to get some more tissue paper on there. So there we go. And you might want to cut down the sides of your of your paper bag so that it resembles a little bit more of a boat. <laughs> Jesus keeps flopping over. But if you put some more tissue paper on, he's not going to fall over. So I really hope you enjoy making this craft and um, for you all to remember that we're all gonna face storms in our lives. But um, what this Bible reading reminds us of is that as long as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and not on our surroundings and not on our own abilities and um, other people, we fix our eyes on Jesus, then we're going to be OK. And we will do extraordinary things. So those extraordinary things, if you remember in our story, Peter walked on water. Now that's amazing. Now when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we too will do extraordinary things and we're going to be OK. OK, guys, it's been lovely being back with you again today and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Take care. Bye bye. Old Testament reading is from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elijah said, I surely, as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha said, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha were stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left and the two of them crossed over onto dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing. Elijah said, Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. This is the word of God.
New Testament reading is from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men appeared, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, and when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my Son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at the time what they had seen. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. I hope that you've enjoyed our talks over the last few weeks about unsung heroes and you've been encouraged by ordinary people doing extraordinary things in the midst of their regular day-to-day -day lives. But as we've been going through those different accounts, I wonder if you've stopped to have a think about what on earth inspired them to react in those amazing ways just when it mattered the most. I wonder whether perhaps it's something to do with having a glimpse of glory. And by glimpses of glory, I mean those moments when we unexpectedly encounter God in a profound way. So for the rest of this month, we're going to look at three different glimpses of glory. Jesus's transfiguration, Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, and Paul's explanation in 2 Corinthians of what glimpses of glory means for us as Christians today. But you'll be pleased to know that as we start off, we get two glimpses of glory for the price of one, Jesus's transfiguration and Elijah being taken up to heaven. When you read the account of Elijah being taken up to heaven, there's a great sense of anticipation at the beginning of it because apparently Elijah and his disciple Elisha both knew that he was about to be taken up to heaven. We're not told how, but they knew in advance. And so effectively Elisha was trailing Elijah the whole day, determined to be there when it actually happened. And I wonder what on earth that felt like, knowing for Elijah that he was about to be taken up to heaven. Anyway, after journeying to a variety of places and dividing a patch of water with his cloak, the moment finally comes. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Dramatic stuff. Jesus' transfiguration was rather different. Jesus took Peter, John and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. 
So these two different glimpses of glory appear on the surface, outwardly, to have happened in quite different ways. But both of them were suffused with the power of Almighty God. So have you ever had a glimpse of glory? One of those moments when God's presence was so real that you could almost touch it. When you wanted to stay in his presence forever and ever. In the account of Jesus' transfiguration, the closest English word to the word used for change is metamorphosis. So we get a sense when we understand what that word means of actually how significant the change in Jesus' appearance was. And if we pause for a moment to reflect on other parts of the Bible, people looking white and dazzling almost always means something important is about to happen directly concerned with Almighty God. But we don't get any more details about what Jesus looked like, and that's probably because it was pretty indescribable. And as if that was not enough, two other people turned up as well. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendour, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfilment at Jerusalem. This must have been completely mind-boggling for the disciples. First we're told that they were very sleepy, and then when they fully wake up, of course they are completely overwhelmed. And Peter, ever the spokesperson, talks about putting up shelters, but interestingly, right at the end of this section, there's a little bracketed bit which says, where Luke tells us that Peter actually had no idea what he was talking about. Glimpses of glory often leave you speechless. The sense of God's presence and power is so overwhelming and so pervasive that nothing else needs to be said. But in this case, there was more. As Peter was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them. And next week, if you listen carefully, you'll find a little bit more out about Moses going into the cloud. But Peter heard this. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I've chosen. Listen to him. So glimpses of glory are those moments when, even for a short time, the veil is pulled aside and we gain a vision however small, of who God really is and how he sees our world. And these experiences uplift us and change us, but they often also prepare us and equip us for challenges ahead. If you remember, Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfilment in Jerusalem. The word used here is exodus, and so Essentially, the transfiguration was not only helping the disciples to glimpse God's glory, but it was also serving to prepare Jesus for the ordeal of his crucifixion and death. And it's absolutely no co coincidence that this passage is followed by Jesus confronting a demon that his disciples just could not deal with. He then went on to predict his own death and to warn his putative disciples about the costs involved of following him. And that's because mountains and valleys belong together. Jesus' baptism, which you could call a mountaintop experience, complete with the Holy Spirit and direct words of encouragement from his Father, was followed by 40 days of temptation in the wilderness. And Paul's experience of Christ on the road to Damascus was followed by attempts on his life. But we also need to remind ourselves that Elijah being taken up to heaven marks the transfer of authority from Elijah the prophet to Elisha. So there's a direct link with Jesus' transfiguration, crucifixion and resurrection and the releasing of the Spirit onto all believers to equip us for his service. Finally then, glimpses of glory are those moments when the veil is pulled aside and we gain a vision of who God really is and how he sees our world. So the next time we are gloriously granted 
a glimpse of God's glory in the midst of our ordinary lives. Let's praise and thanks God. Heed his voice saying, this is my son whom I've chosen. Listen to him and remember that we are blessed so that we might be a blessing to others. Amen. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Good morning everybody. I'm going to pray around several topics and at the end of each section I will say Lord in your mercy and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. 
let's start with the church both locally and worldwide. Strengthen all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. We thank you that we have been able to start meeting again in the church building as well as online. We also thank you that we've been able to meet in small groups in gardens and get to know each other better. We pray for your guidance and blessing on our Vicar Sally and for all our church leadership team as they seek to lead us both face to face and online. We ask that we may be aware of your guidance and direction for how this church can be a blessing to the people of Bath Ford, especially as we start to think about how church might work in the winter months as the COVID restrictions continue. Help us to hear what you are saying and put into action what we hear. Lord, in your mercy. We pray about the discussions and decisions arising from COVID-19. We rejoice that the restrictions have been gradually lifted, but remain conscious that the virus is still present. We pray for our politicians that you will give them wisdom to choose appropriate and effective ways forward that will not undo all the gains so far. We also remember people who've lost jobs and income as a result of COVID. Guide us to know how we might be of help to them. Lord, in your mercy. Turning to the world, we particularly bring Lebanon before you and pray for effective coordination of the relief effort and rebuilding work in Beirut. Lord, in your mercy. Thinking of our village, we thank you for the way people, both young and old, have come together to support the initiatives in Bath Ford to make sure people can get food and are not forgotten despite needing to self-isolate or now to quarantine. We think of our school as the children return in September and praise that ways may be found to keep both children and staff safe. We also think of students who have had or are expecting A-level and GCA results and for those who have just finished university and pray for positive next steps, even though these may be different from what they had planned due to the current circumstances. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. We bring before you our villages currently in Shockerwick, Joyce, Anne and Faye. We also lift before you Wendy and Adrian, the Stone family, Wendy F, Audrey and Bishop Peter. We remember those who have recently lost loved ones and particularly bring before you Joanne and Sophie and family. Prompt us to pray for all these people and to text, email and phone so that they know they are not forgotten. Lastly, we also bring before you those who've lost loved ones in the Aberdeen Trail derailment. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Oh, 
Thank you to everybody who has joined us this morning, to all of those who've been worshipping together in church, in the church building. Thank you to everybody who's contributed. There'll be a list of credits afterwards here and in church. And I pray that as we spend time with each other in the presence of our Heavenly Father, as we have those glimpses of glory, we'll remember uh, who he's called us to be and what he's called us to do as the body of Christ. So as you go out into the week, may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit remain with you and among you forever. Amen. <laughs>